Hey everyone, James with TFB TV. Many of you are familiar with Zostava's Black Arrow M93, their 50 cal anti material sniper rifle. Well, we're actually here in Serbia at Zostava Oruje looking at the new M12 Black Spear. Now, before we talk to the engineers who worked on the M12, we're going to talk to my good friend Ranko from Zostava USA, and he's going to tell us about the M93. Then we're going to bring you to the next level. Hey everyone, James Reeves with TFB TV here with my good friend Ranko, the head honcho at Zostava USA. That's your official title, right? Let's get the titulars out of the way. I'm a, a CEO and the owner of uh, Zostava Arms USA. And a good friend of mine. We always love having you on the program. We, of course, TFB TV and our viewers love Zostava, so it's always a Thank treat whenever that. we get any hardware, especially something like this, the M93 Black Arrow not one of the more common Zostava guns. I imagine you sell quite a few more M70s than you do M93s, right? That's correct, but also uh, every single batch uh, that we import uh, to the country is sold right away. So, uh, because this is a unique rifle, of course, we don't sell it in thousands like uh, a ZPEP M70, but for sure they are uh, there is a market for this. Yeah, and let's talk about the M93. What is it? If somebody has never heard of it out there, well, M93 is uh, uh, Zastava uh, uh, bolt action rifle. It's based on a uh, Mauser 98 action, and this one is chambered in uh, uh, 50 BMG. Uh, that was a request actually from uh, Yugoslav Army uh, just be before the war in uh, in 90s, and uh, but because of the war, the production did not start uh, when it was planned originally. Uh, but we did uh, see some action at the end of the war in the 90s, and today it's, uh, it's used, uh, I mean, in the parts of the world uh, where it's needed. So Middle East, Africa, uh, uh, also Philippine uh, Army uh, order uh, M93s. Uh, it's very reliable, uh, anti-material sniper rifle with a, with a range uh, of 1.2 miles. Holy shit. So this rifle is uh, intended for uh, for uh, destroying targets uh, like uh, vehicles and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in the sporting uh, it's used uh, uh, you know <laughs> to, for, for fun to, to, for fun <laughs> yes but it's it's God really bless this uh, country it's really pleasure to shoot uh, I I really uh, was surprised when I shot it first time that. Uh, Recoil is not that bad. Uh, it's more of the of the pressure and the, mm -hmm. that you get from the from 50 BMG. Right. So it's uh, it's definitely a rifle for a, a niche market. Yeah, I'd say so. M93 is that following the typical Zostava naming scheme where it's like it came out in 1993? Yeah, typically that. Uh, uh, like M70 came out 1970, in 1970s. Yeah. So. Uh, 93 that tells you that it was intended uh, 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 if there was no war it would be probably uh, in mass production in 93 but it was delayed a little bit so yeah I can imagine and uh, we are happy to offer it in the United States where does the name Black Arrow come from I mean if you uh, take a, 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 a photo of the rifle from the top, you'll know why. why yeah, it, yeah, it does that, that look makes like sense. A black arrow. Yeah, that that's actually yeah. funny. And yeah. and a lot of customers actually tell us that the the name, name it's it's cool and it fits the rifle. How many of these come into the United States every year? If you can share that information. I mean, we we import few dozens a month. Uh huh. Uh, and uh, and they all go out the door. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. There is there is definitely market. We have few distributors that would. Uh, that would purchase from every batch. They would uh, uh, pre uh, allocate uh, uh, part of the each batch for them. So. And there are quite a few 50 cal's. Everybody's got kind of a novelty 50 cal rifle. There are a lot of uh, bolt action 50 cal's, but I guess one thing that sets this apart and maybe makes it more desirable is it, it <laughs> has seen conflict and has been used in armed conflict. In a way, it's a, what we would say like a proven rifle. Is that a fair statement? Yes, uh, and uh, as all of the uh, uh, rifles that we sell in the United States for a civilian market, mm -hmm. uh, all of them were uh, already tested, battle, battle proven uh, somewhere in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why 
Zastava has uh, that loyal customer base because you know that you get the rifle that it's not uh, only for uh, uh, sports or it was not uh, tested properly. Mm -hmm. If uh, somebody's life uh, depends on this, if they carry it in a, in a conflict uh, in the battle, then uh, you can be sure that uh, uh, it's going to be a very reliable weapon. Let's walk through the features. So here you have a, a polymer uh, buttstock with a, a, a rubber pad that will absorb some of the recoil. Then uh, you have a trigger that uh, a lot of shooters like, uh, and uh, it's uh, it bre breaks very uh, how they say it's crispy, <laughs> and uh, uh, we're gonna shoot it later, so you'll see mm -hmm. uh, what I'm talking about and. Uh, for uh, such a big weapon, uh, it's very important that uh, trigger is uh, is properly designed and, and set. Uh, then you have a here a magazine that holds five five rounds mm -hmm. of uh, 50 BMG. Uh, of course, you have a Picatinny rail. This scope here is just for a presentation. Uh, shooters, when they buy uh, rifles like this, they 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 like to pick their own uh, optics. Oh, and, yeah, uh, yeah. Definitely, this is not uh, maybe the most optimal uh, for, for this, but uh, for a presentation, we have it here. Yeah, if you want 1.2 miles, you probably need something a little more yeah, robust. Yeah. Than, but also, yeah. the mechanical sights are, are very useful. Yeah. Let's say if uh, your optics uh, break or for any reason you can't use them, you just quickly remove it and uh, you can use mechanical sights. And they've got tritium inserts or something. It's glow in the dark, right? Yeah, the yeah. And uh, and there, uh, the each rifle is sighted already, so you can rely on these mm -hmm. uh, up to a certain distance. Oh, so these are sighted in at the yeah, factory yes. with the irons. Yeah, that's correct. And then uh, <clears throat> here we go uh, on the barrel. It's uh, coal hammer forged and it's uh, 33 inches long. Mm -hmm. uh, it has eight grooves with a with a pitch of. Uh, uh, 150, uh, 115, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, as you can see, it has these uh, uh, fluids here for, mm -hmm. for cooling. You mm -hmm. know, so more surface you have, sure. it will yeah, release yeah. the heat uh, faster. And then it's a the big break, yeah, yeah. Muzzle break uh, that uh, absorb up to 60% of recoil. Uh -huh. So it's uh, designed the angles help a lot with the recoil. And then once we shoot it, you'll see. Uh, You'll see how they work, and uh, overall, this rifle is, uh, we think, in many ways, uh, unique. Uh, of course, you have a lot of offers uh, for 50 BMG, and I'm sure that, uh, especially people who love Zastava, uh, this is one of the rifles for their collection. Talk to me about the bipod. I mean, this is kind of unusual. You've got like this, you know, balanced bipod in the middle of the rifle. Yeah, that's that's uh, done on purpose. Uh, again, everything is about recoil mm -hmm. and it helps uh, also a little bit if you have a balanced uh, uh, rifle uh, during the recoil, uh, it will be a little bit more stable mm -hmm. uh, right off the of the bat. So 33 uh, pounds, uh -huh. so it's not a, a very light uh, rifle. So balance helps a lot because if, if the bipod was, uh, let's say, more to the front, then the shooter has a little bit more weight uh, to manage uh, this this way, it's as you can see, uh, perfectly balanced. Okay. I see these markings, right? And and you and I know what they are, but maybe the viewers out there don't. But you've got markings at several points on the gun. What exactly is that? But those are uh, a lot of these parts have a, a, what they call pencil marks. Uh, so all uh, parts that are hand fitted to this specific rifle, uh, all the numbers will match. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of parts, if you open the like a bolt. They will have those those marks, and uh, that tells you that this is a complete unit that been assembled in the factory and tested there. So that's why we do not recommend replacing the parts uh, with the aftermarket parts or anything. If you do replace the part, it's got to be a Zastava manufactured and installed by qualified gunsmen. These are all made in Serbia, 100% Serbian. Yeah. This is 100% uh, Serbian, uh, including the what they call coffin, the, uh -huh. the big wooden case. Uh -huh. uh, that's how it comes from Serbia. That's how we ship it to the end user. The barrel is uh, the same barrel that they would use on a 50 caliber machine guns. 
so barrel itself takes uh, takes quite a more time to to produce and then uh, Mauser uh, based action uh, is all always more time consuming uh, it, it requires a lot more a lot more fitting than uh, of course in semi-auto you have a completely different system and that's why this this rifle takes a lot more time and that's why the price is also uh, multiple times uh, higher than a, than a, let's say, a regular Z-Pack. And how much is that? I mean, these are like 7,000? Yeah, they, they uh, retail for around 7,000. Of course, uh, Zastav Arms USA does not sell to public, so we are importer, we are first step. So we allow a, a nice margin to a distributor, then distributor will sell it to a, a dealer, then dealer sells it to, sells it to a end user. Zastava. Uh, factory has been happy with this uh, rifle, so they are constantly investing in uh, improving maybe to a to a newer models. And there is already uh, one that it's out that it's a little bit uh, lighter. So mm -hmm. uh, the, as I said, this is 33 pounds, so that's why it has this handle, mm -hmm. uh, so you can carry it. Uh, and the uh, new model will be a little bit lighter. Now we're here at Zastava Ruje in Serbia. We're actually at the factory with Mr. Zorin, yep. one of their engineers. Uh, Mr. Zorin, you helped design the M12, correct? Yeah, so I, I, well, I'm one of the design engineers that, that is a part of the team that worked on this new model. Can you tell me about the improvements between the M93 to the M12? Uh, first, it's uh, my great pleasure to be able to present this new version uh, of the rifle and to explain its uh, upgrades. A uh, long-range rifle M93 uh, was sold uh, in large quantities all over the world. And based on the experience of our users, uh, we uh, realized that we should make some changes and upgrade the rifle a bit. And this is what we'll show you with this rifle, M12M. Uh, we reduced the weight by three kilos, which is, of course, very important for the users that have to carry it. We also reduced the length of the barrel, uh, which is uh, very useful for uh, specific situations where the long barrel is just in your way. The muzzle has uh, a new upgraded muzzle brake. We have a bipod, which is, of course, again, lighter. Uh, we also made uh, some uh, changes in the design of the magazine catch. It's the same design as uh, you have in the uh, assault rifle, for example. Uh, we added the elongated Picatinny rail, uh, which is able to uh, accept uh, various types of optical sights. And we modified the stock, we made some changes uh, to make things easier for uh, snipers. So you have a cheap cheek pad and it has uh, the third point for ah, additional yes. support. So we wanted to basically shorten the whole uh, weapon. We made the stock uh, folding. As you have a long Picatinny rail, as we said, you can uh, mount any kind of device that you like to use. The trigger mechanism uh, is also different. It's a new design and uh, it is characterized by a better uh, trigger pull. And uh, finally, uh, the handle uh, is different, so it's more easy to operate and to carry the gun. What remained the same, and which is the more most important thing in this rifle, is the chrome-lined barrel, famous Mauser system. And uh, we need to emphasize that we make this rifle in two calibers, so it's 0.50 Browning and 12.7 by 108 as well. As this is basically a sniper rifle, so if you use appropriate ammunition, uh, the rifle is very precise. So uh, at uh, 1400 meter, you get a group of uh, yes. around 50. 50 centimeters? 50, 20, 20 oh, wow. centimeters, wow. yeah. Wow, okay. Are you permitted to tell me whether or not there are any military or law enforcement units who are actually using this rifle right now? What we can say that the uh, Serbian army uses mm -hmm. this rifle. Uh, there are some potential uh, interests around the world, but we cannot talk about that. Sure. <laughs> and what has the feedback been? Are people saying that this is much better than the mm -hmm. M93? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, the feedback that we got is that the customers are uh, really satisfied with this rifle because all the, let's say, faults that we noticed in this rifle, all the information that we got from our, our customers, we try to implement in this rifle and improve it. And that's how we got this product with uh, 
that customers are pleased with. Was it a difficult decision to shorten the barrel? Because I assume that you sacrifice some range mm -hmm. when you do that. Uh, well, yes, it was a tough decision because you uh, do get reduced uh, range. M93 has the effective range uh, of about 1,800 meters, and this one is um, has the effective range about 1,600 meters. Still pretty good. Yeah. Mr. Zorin, thank you so much for answering my questions, and thank you for explaining the differences between these two rifles. You've done a fantastic job, you along with your team. We're honored to be here, and we're honored to have you on the program. I, I know our viewers are also honored to see you uh, on YouTube. <laughs> Guys, stay tuned. We're going to be bringing you more from Zostagar.